what's up guys, it's the Mega 301 woman here, here with another death battle reaction, let's go, Milano, already, they already know you're here, so you know what, just get, just get over with, you already know you're so excited, this might be Ooh. the most hyped I've ever been for a death battle, oh, more so man. than Goku Black vs. Reverse Flash, Ultron vs. Sigma, or Ganondorf vs. Dracula, not only are these two... The, 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 this is a matchup I absolutely love with all my heart, but these are two characters I'm strongly attached to, with Dimitri being my third favorite Fire Emblem character, and Guts being one of my favorite characters in all of fiction. And the fact that Berserk is my second favorite manga. And I will say, I have no, no attachment to these characters at all, and Minato and Minato is so hyped for this episode. We're, we, we're picking out all of the things for this episode. We got popcorn, we got the, he has, Minato has the I have my the, cherry coke in a wine glass. Let me pop that right now. I broke out the, the fine dress wear for this episode, a.k.a. my Time Hot t-shirt. I have a Berserk t-shirt on. So we are ready for this episode. We are ready. But with that in mind, I don't think any more words need to be said. Let's get right into this. Alright. Uh, yeah, let's go. episode is sponsored by BetterHelp and Mint Mobile. That was a very long and awkward pause. Yeah, my bad. Let's take this picture. Guts, <laughs> the brutal black swordsman of Berserk. And Dimitri, the savage savior king from Fire Emblem. Vengeance is an ever malicious force that can turn anyone into a broken, traumatized, unstoppable one man army. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. This is gonna be so freaking so good. Excited. In the realm of Midland, life really sucks all around. Demons run rampant, villages get pillages, and a helpless elf fairy has become target practice for some thugs. Batter up! Until walking into the torment comes a stranger clad in black, cleaving through anyone in his way with one humongous sword. A is that weapon raw, is too big iron. to be called a sword? Too yeah, that thin, reference. More like a slab of raw iron that no man is. could wield. Except for the man with a simple but fitting name. Guts. But what is it that makes Guts so terrifying? Well, we're about to get into some really, really dark shit. Fair warning. Born from his mother's recently hanged corpse, Guts was taken in by a mercenary band led by Gambino. Who definitely isn't winning father of the year. Gambino put Guts through the ringer, training him with swords way, way too big for him before putting there. him into live combat I, I will not doubt nine that. years old. Training with such large swords made Guts inhumanly strong, but he needed a different kind of strength to endure the horrendous abuse he suffered from Gambino. So he murdered the bastard in self-defense. He deserved it. it, trust me, with no home or family to speak of, Guts aimlessly wandered for years as a lone mercenary like, uh, until he caught the eye of the ambitious Griffin. Like, Impressed Griffin? by Guts' bold battle prowess and blunt honesty, Griffin uh. wanted him. So Guts joined his mercenary group, the Band of the Hawk. Where Guts' is, gutsy fighting style made him the perfect captain. The dude was hardcore enough to fight what a hundred enemy soldiers on his own, and even helped end a 100 year long war, all while earning respect and glory with Griffith and his group. For the first time, Guts found true friends and comrades to rely on. But when Griffith realized he couldn't keep Guts at his side, uh, Really, really bad things happened. Upon the eclipse, Griffith summoned a bunch of demons, became a super demon himself, and sacrificed Guts' new friends to the abyss. If that wasn't bad enough, he marked Guts with a demonic brand, then raped his girlfriend Casca, forcing Guts to watch as his eye was split open and he was forced to tear off his own arm. Yeah, yeah really so bad bad. things. I forgot Guts how barely fucked up this was. Yeah, life. He vowed to brutally murder an Griffin anime. and everyone yeah. down to the last one. You get attached no to all these tasks, characters and you watch them him. die. And every big task needs even bigger There's weapons. There's a comic to kill all Guts over again. Bread and butter, or butter is the enormous it's more dragon than slayer. Than a comic kill. Six and a half I won't doubt. Yep, I, I, I can tell this by the panels. Pounds, dragon slayer is absurd. In Guts' hands, it can cleave through plated armor and even demons with skin of Corundum, a real-life metal that is harder than steel. 
And since oh, Guts wow. has made killing demons his favorite pastime, Dragon Slayer was exposed to so much demonic blood that it exists on the astral plane, meaning it can harm any supernatural monster. God, God, this thing's heavy. Guts also carries a collection of explosives and throwing knives, but I'm partial to his mechanical arm, complete with a wondrous invention of a repeater crossbow and a secret cannon. Yeah, that's neat and all, but they aren't as awesome as Dragon Slayer here. God, how does he do this? Okay, the repeater crossbow is pretty cool. It can fire a volley of four to five bolts per second, making it the go-to option. See, if you have the armor, you don't want to be like a armor and around. Hey, you gotta lose yep. your hand. I, I see it, I see it. the goddamn super gun is the way to go. Even demons are afraid of this thing. See ya, snake face! With his collection of weapons and indomitable will, Guts slaughtered everyone and everything in his way. Be it an army of trolls, a supersonic elf fairy, or some Bible thumper whose blows were like cannons. But while Guts took the physical challenges in stride, his mental strife was a different story. He had demons to deal with, literally and figuratively, always tormented by his inner beast of darkness. Guts tried to shoulder this trauma alone, even for a time leaving behind Casca, who survived but was mentally broken. Nothing would replace the comrade's guts lost during the eclipse. However, through his resilience, he eventually saw that. the dangerous path he was on, and so reunited with Casca and eventually came to depend on new companions. Including pretty boy Serpico. He doesn't look like much, but the guy is fast enough to dodge lightning at speeds over 100 times faster than sound. And Guts has kept okay. up with him more than once. And thanks oh, to wow. the Witch of Flora, Guts got his deadliest and riskiest asset, we go. the Berserker armor. Oh boy, they shouldn't down all mental limitations. This armor gives Guts a huge amp in strength. Pain means nothing to him now, and it even heals injuries on the fly. Wait, did I say heal? What I meant was it pierces his torn flesh and broken bones together so he can fight until the actual last drop of blood has left his body. Man, that's oh, awesome. Oh, yeah, they're definitely and gonna use this thing a whole lot this time. Donning the armor has been nearly oh, disastrous yeah. for him more than once. He yeah, is going to be stitched up rage. The beast of darkness is gnawing on his mind, tempting him to go berserk. Bam! Title drop! Guts' tenacity is a sight to behold. He's held back a demonic dragon, withstood being impaled, and even teamed up with a fabled demon swordsman to take down an apostle that can channel lightning. And sliced up a cloud dude in the rawest manga panel ever! Just look at it! If that's not badass enough for you, he once killed a giant sea god! From the inside, with its whale, tell me one thing: it's not a storm with that clouds. covered an entire island. The kinetic energy of such a storm is immense. Gauging the size of the island, the energy required to induce such a storm would need to exceed 600 kilotons of TNT. Oh, wow! Yeah, that's right. Guts gutted a sea monster whose shout was a natural disaster. He needed to do that and much more to reach Elfhelm, where Casca's lost sanity was finally returned. Things were looking up for the legendary black swordsman. But that bastard Griffith just wouldn't leave him alone. No matter how tragic his tale becomes, Guts will persevere for his allies, both past and present. He has new friends, a renewed heart, a badass sword, and the last thing any man, demon, or god wants to do is mess with him. Fuck yeah! I really like that analysis. This episode yep. of Death Battles yeah, that was that was nice help. Um, Sometimes in life you can get yeah, stuck with tough choices. Yeah, it builds a lot more on character than his previous analysis. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, you can really see the success. It could, age, it could be your career, uh, your relationships, your finances. His, uh, story it feels in like the, the instant one problem gets era. solved, another three take it. You can really tell just how much Death Battles improved just by the analysis. You can also tell how hyped they were to reuse guts. Definitely, definitely. I a proper work-life balance. I know I could only use less time Let's see Dimitri. As soon as the ad's over. If you're thinking of starting therapy, consider giving BetterHelp a try. It's but yeah, just uh, I did hear that he was lightning speed, so but I, I didn't realize he was island level. And you can switch therapists. At any yeah, well, what's, I think it's the no highest calc I've ever seen for guts. Be your map with better help. Visit better help I get. I guess we'll have to see what they give Dimitri because I heard he's like maybe either. I've heard from town level to mountain level. So. All right. On the continent of Fargolin lies the holy kingdom of Fargus, a knightly nation where the youth learn to swing a sword before they can write their own name. 
Prince Dmitri Alexandra Blathid was no exception. The kid was like a prodigy, him. able to spar with far more experienced warriors, hey, in part because leaves. he was a crest bearer, Dislikes or someone Hail gifted guard. mystical power through the blood of the goddess Sothis. Those born with a crest gain anything from enhanced magic to superhuman strength. At nine years old, Dmitri could lift giant boulders, run across oh, wow. mountains for hours, and constantly broke swords by accident. Most elites who had a crest also had a massive ego, but not Dimitri. Right, Dimitri was strong, but generally kind. Like when he gave his childhood friend Edelgard a dagger. An earnest, if odd, gift. Oh boy. I got shotgun shells for my first crush. But life took a turn for Dimitri when a mysterious group murdered his dad and a bunch of knights, burning them all in front of him. Yeah, he severe the poor PTSD. kid with some serious survivors. Yeah, there we go. That only worsened when the country of Dusker was unjustly blamed for the tragedy. Dimitri lamented that he could not stop Fargus's corrupt nobles. Don't worry though, when those same nobles rebelled a couple years later, he fought them like a beast, slaying them all with sadistic glee. The this savage side would emerge hands, when Dimitri way. was reminded of the tragedy he witnessed. Okay. Otherwise, his chivalrous charm remained forefront. With guidance from his dead dad's buddy Rodrigue, Dimitri got into the Garrick Mock Officers Academy, where he led the Blue Lion's house and learned the mystic arts. Well, he's not the most proficient in it, but Dimitri did learn healing and elemental magics, able Ooh. to call down lightning or even channel it through his weapons. Letting him electrocute tons of enemies at once, he learned this and more from everyone's favorite Okay, Smash so Bros. that's not really gonna affect Professor Guts much. Uh, assuming you <laughs> <laughs> he chose Blue Lions when he played Fire Emblem Three Houses. I had Smash getting Bros. a little meta here, but his story turns out very differently depending on the path chosen. Aside from the Blue Lions, there's Edelgard's Black Eagles. And the Golden Deer, led by the crafty Claude Von Regan, aka the best house. <laughs> that band of goofy misfits? The Black Eagles are a far more cohesive. Blue Lions now, all the way! The deer with <laughs> I've never no played this game, I can't about. pick! Ash and Wolves for life, losers! Of course, Jocelyn picks the goths. Anyway, in Dimitri's route, he mastered all manner of weaponry. I, I don't Lances, didn't swords, me a axes, gauntlets, and more. <laughs> some of these weapons use magic, some use poison, and others are used to slay giant monsters. But all of them made Dimitri an ace at warfare, especially when Violet taught him some special skills. The seal movement technique stops foes in their tracks. Frozen Lance skewers enemies with ice, and Swordbreaker boosts evasion Ooh, against blades. To, they're to they're top it off, Dimitri can enter in a weakened state for even more power. Dimitri led his classmates through thick and thin, but everything changed when he suspected the one behind the tragedy of Dusker was his old dagger friend, Edelgard. Dun dun dun! To end Fodlin's oppressive crest system, Edelgard and her empire declared war on Fargus and the Church of Saros. Dimitri could be cruel before, but after this betrayal, he snapped, vowing to kill every last one of them. For five years, he slaughtered the enemy, all to appease the voices that called for Edelgard's head. He's not exaggerating. Dimitri truly believes his dead loved ones cry to him, unable to know peace until he claims vengeance. As if Prince turned murderer hobo wasn't scary enough, he wields the ultimate lance, the hero's relic, Eridfar. Forged from the bones of dragon like Nabataeans, Eridfar is much stronger than ordinary metal. It can pierce any armor with its signature move, Atrocity, and only crest bears can wield it without mutating into a monstrous black beast. With his lance, Dimitri kept killing, but no Clean bloodshed weapon. could calm Just his that with enough demonic Marie shit to know thing about a bad idea. Torturing an enemy commander in blind rage. But when his actions led to Rodrigue making the ultimate sacrifice, Dimitri Dimitri was broken, terrified of yet another voice haunting him. Except this time, he had his professor to help him out. We really gotta pay teachers more, y'all. Dimitri still felt hatred for Edelgard, but looked Bats. past to the friends and kingdom he neglected and made a choice. Instead of killing every last one of them, he would save every last one by retaking Fargus's capital. A task this wretch turned savior king had the strength to do. Dimitri has dodged meteors going by really 60, decimating oh. a squad of soldiers with one spear through and wow. defeated a wizard from the magic Illuminati. This is Talus, whose power shook a futuristic underground city. And Dimitri just walked through his magic Can like it was nothing. Dimitri's city? also more than a match for Edelgard, who, in her route, bested the Archbishop of the Church of Saros, Rhea. This is important, because after dragging it up, Rhea survived two exploding javelins of light, aka magic nukes. Jeez, and Dimitri can fight on her level? 
Indeed, but in the end, despite half a decade of slaughter, Dimitri was hesitant to kill Edelgard, in part from learning she wasn't responsible for the tragedy. Still, both monarchs had ideas for Fodlin that were simply incompatible. And then Edelgard pulled a fast one with that old dagger present. Dimitri definitely felt that irony. The war was over, and with his allies at his side, and Dimitri claimed his place Dimitri. as a just king. Unless, you know, you picked a different house. His story doesn't end very happy in those. But though the voices of the dead will haunt Dimitri until yeah, his I final I breath, will, so long as he uh, has his friends, fear. conviction, and compassion sure for the living, he will find slower. peace. Silver Okay, oh, that was a little weird, because I didn't... This episode of Death Metal is sponsored by... It didn't count the magic nukes. All right, I'm I'm gonna say right I'm gonna say right now, based on what they gave us, I think Guts is gonna win. Guts has a chance. I, I'm still leaning towards Dimitri because they didn't calc the nukes, and I feel like they're yeah, gonna that, that does slightly again. concern me. But like, Guts is faster, has armor, which granted, he, uh, Dimitri does have the piercing thing, but I I think Guts has this. I'm still leaning towards Dimitri, but I will be mo I will be completely happy if I'm proven wrong. Plus, they, they mentioned that his his uh, spear is made of from dragon bones. That's wields dragon slayer. So like, I, I don't know if that'll be brought up or if that'll even like affect anything. But like, also, Dimitri attacks with lightning. Guts has been shown like he can tank lightning. So like, I, I think Guts has this. It looks surprisingly close. All right, the combat. But they didn't set. mention the, the data for all either of them. It's yeah. It's time for a death battle. Here we go. Let's go. Oh. <sighs> One hundred men strong. What drives your slaughter? To save the high and mighty crap till you're dead. Right. Amazing! I know, right? Oh my god! Nice. I love this already. From your shoulders, the dead must have their revenge. Yep, that sounds like a meteor, all right. Oh shit! Oh damn! Go to hell! This is so good. Oh yeah, they broke his arm. Wisdom tear his body. Avenge us. Yield me. Promise, I'll kill them, all of them, down to the last one. Let's go. Holy shit! I love this! This is so oh beautiful! Oh damn! Enough of this! Is that it? I don't think I don't feel that's it. Yep. To the last drop of blood. No, no. Nope. There he goes. What? What? Huh? He died. Standing? So we're both shackled to the dead. You foul beasts will not have his soul. Wait. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. I don't know what's scarier, Dimitri the Demon or Gut still standing there. Uh, he was a badass till the end. Mark, that was awesome. Dodge awesome. Lightning, Guts actually had a slight speed advantage over Dimitri, though skills like seal movement and sword breaker helped Dimitri close the gap. And while Dimitri had some minor healing magic to fall back on, it wasn't going to compete with the raw endurance from the Berserker armor. Still, Dimitri's absurd strength and wider pool of weapons and abilities gave him plenty of ways to wear Guts down. Against Dimitri's electricity magic, Guts' sword and armor were vulnerable conductors, making every clash an opportunity to electrocute him. Sure, Guts has defeated lightning callers before, but he needed help. Not to mention, moves like atrocity can pierce through armored foes, bypassing yeah. half the point of wearing the Berserker armor. Guts could power through some of Eridfar's damage, but he wasn't invincible and could not heal from fatal wounds. Then there's both fighters' raw power. Slaying demons is really impressive, obviously, but not always on par with uh, magic nukes. Remember, in Edelgard's route, she defeated Rhea, who survived two Javelins of Light. In Dimitri's route, he defeated Edelgard, while she was a powered-up crest monster. That happened. So, if Rhea could take on the Javelins of Light, Dimitri should be at a similar level. So, let's find out how strong a Javelin is. In yeah. Thorgan's lore, oh, several Javelins... Yeah, this is what I was waiting for. This was the, this was the, the one Valley thing. Of torment. However, the exact number of javelins used to create the valley was never given, making the power of an individual javelin unclear. But we do know the javelins in this attack were supposed to hit the Garigmok Monastery, until the goddess Sothis nope them away and they hit the forest instead. We also know that the javelins of light are not limitless, with typically no more than six being used at once, even against structures similar in size to Garrick Mach. So, if a similar amount were used in the attack that made the valley, each javelin would pack a payload that's over three gigatons oh, of TNT. Yeah. Even if we severely lowballed this and said the destruction was divided oh. between 10, 50, or even 100 yeah, different I, javelins of light, I, I, surviving I two javelins would still be greater than the, the best armor. of Guts' feats, yeah. even uh, scaled to the Sea God. Guts' persistence meant he wouldn't go down easy, but against Dimitri's inhuman strength, devastating abilities, and fervent will, it was well, just a matter of time before the uh, vengeful uh, king Guts wore through it. Saying it makes me up, reserved, but, but Guts could yeah. only go so far, Gus. The winner uh, aside from Dimitri that Alexandra amazing Blake. episode, I love yeah, absolutely Dimitri. phenomenal. <laughs> that Thanks right. for watching. Stay tuned. That, we have a new I think next time, I, I think it's Bill Cyrus. Aside from Cole versus Alex, I'm betting either that or Ash versus Yugi. I'm, I'm betting Bill Cyber versus Discord. This year, and click the join I button to get new perks and extra content. I can't wait for being none of those before anyone else, so don't miss out. Next time, Martian Manhunter versus Pickle. Okay. Oh, Silver Surfer. Oh, a little weird that we're already getting another Marvel versus DC, but. Hey, at least it's not Piccolo. Yeah, all right. Yep. Uh, let's, Wasn't let's, expecting let's, that. Let's try it again. Fuck yeah! My biggest gripe is just the fact that it's the third Marvel vs. DC fight already, and I'm like... We just had one two episodes ago. The last one. Yeah. Uh... Like, we just had a Marvel vs. DC episode. Yeah, I'm starting to get, like, Season 7 flashbacks here. But, uh... Yeah, I, I agree with you. This is a 10 out of 10 episode. Not even, not even my, my uh, rooting bias can, like, change that. Your bias towards what? Uh, my... My, you know, remember I told you I, I always have a bias for whomever I root for? Ah, okay. Yeah, this is a 10 out of 10. I, I, I can't, not even, not even me having voted for Guts will change that. A absolutely incredible. That ending was just holy shit. I know, like, this has been the longest waiting period of my... This has been the longest waiting period uh, I've had for a while. Also, that... Fa that fake-out is the best fake-out Death Battle has ever had. I'm not sure if I... I haven't really thought about what the best fake-out is. I don't care I what the... 
That 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 is the best fake out now. The, uh, okay, I, I, probably the best fake out this season, at the very least. What other fake outs are there this season? Uh, Stitch versus Rocket. Nah, I, I, I don't agree. I don't agree. That, 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 that was fairly obvious Stitch was going to come back from that once he didn't get immediately annihilated. Yeah, it, I mean, I, I just said it was a fake out, not that it was as good of a fake out as this. Fair enough, fair enough. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that, I, that was fucking beautiful. Holy shit. What even is, like, is Silver Surfer versus Martian Manhunter meant to be the wave? Because that's, like, the only thing I can think of. I don't know. But, uh, let's end the episode here, so thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for the episode, holy shit. Yes, in case anybody from Death, the Death Battle team watches this, which I doubt you will, thank you so much. This, this was absolutely amazing. It, this, is the mo this is the most excited I've been for a Death Battle, and I, I, I couldn't be happier with the outcome. Yeah. But yeah, just make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I do these. I do. I always react to Death Battle with Minato. So if you like the, if you like our dynamic, just uh, stick around, and we'll we'll be here in two weeks. Mm -hmm. As always, the original episode will be in the description. Go show Death Battle some love. Holy shit, they deserve it. And I'll see you all in the next episode, Minato. This no, is. Can your, we get a little greedy? Can we do? Tra can you do Travis versus Jack, please? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Minato? This is your episode. This is your Death Battle episode. You do the outro. Travis Touchdown versus Jack Kamen and uh, Crow Dan versus Seto Kaiba are my two most wanted. That's all I'm gonna say. I really hope we get one of those, at least one of those two episodes, sometime. All right. S see ya.